Hello everyone, good morning, Lorenzo here, episode 9 of Kerbal Space Colonization, where today we'll be hunting asteroids. And to remember the past, we're starting here with the Hunter 1, which famously grabbed an asteroid, grabbed hold of it, received a refueling mission, and still failed to get it home. See, the Hunter 1 asteroid, which was meant for raw materials for the colonization effort, is now just floating limply in interplanetary space. In a year it will come close to the planet again, maybe we'll do a resupply mission. Today we're gonna hunt asteroid, heat shield asteroid. I may require, I may need to, f to come up with a better name, but we're gonna do that. And in two hours it's going to enter Kerbin's sphere of influence. Uh, yeah, come on, close these alarm details. Let's actually find um, our hunter ship and then we can uh, let's see, focus view on Minmus. Our hunter ship is this one, the Sun Diver Mark III. Now, as before, I've of course done zero research as to where this asteroid is going to happen upon our solar system. But look, we have a larger capture vessel. This has six nuclear engines, the previous one had one. This has a lot less fuel though, but it has an onboard mining and refining station. So it can probably churn out the whole asteroid itself as fuel. Now that is something, I think. Right. Let's see about finding this asteroid then. It is tracked. We should be able to sort of see it. I think this is the one. BFN572. Yes. Set as a target. Let's see. This will have a Kerbin encounter in... Holy moly, it's going to crash! So it's, it's, darn, it's darn important that we go get it. We are a little bit on the wrong side of Kerbin, though. Anyway, we will have to make a beeline intercept for it. Let's see if that's even possible. Let's make a, uh, a approach happen. I think that will be possible, because this will probably be a very slow approach. Let's see, here we go, the asteroid. Ah, come on, get it, go away with your encounter. The Vol intercept course change is happening in seven days, by the way. That might actually be... What the hell? Oh, this is the Sun orbit. That might ha happen before uh, this. All right. Asteroid. It's inside our sphere of influence. Now we're going to have to go and get it. This, is, this will be a little bit hard. This will be a little bit hard. Um, we shall start by burning towards it, I think. That will give us a vector roughly in the correct direction. So, do we have a target marker? Yes, we do. We will we will give like 400 meters per second towards the asteroid. Let's see, this is not actually going to plow us into the ground. It might. We're at 115 kilometers distant. And if we go fully straight, yeah, we will still miss the horizon, but only just. I'm going to angle that up a little bit. Our delta V is uh, evolving very slowly. This probably means that I, I should have packed more engines, but then I don't think I should have. Oh man, we're not going to be in the situation where I'm actually going to run out of fuel. I, I, I hope not. I do have two tanks per engine and this I mean most of the weight is still gonna be the fuel so we, we will be start backing on more speed relatively soon let's see our periapsis is now 10 kilometers that's fairly low and it's also fairly going to mess with our trajectory I think but let's see we are now burning this straight into the direction of that asteroid we would have an intercept, only... Yeah, you know what, let's actually wait and try and actually do a maneuver node, because I, th I have a feeling that we're just uselessly wasting delta V. Right, we need to go this way. We obviously need to go faster. Alright, we, we are seeing our projected movement from in the, the in the reference frame of Kerbin. Maybe we don't need to go faster. We need to go like here somewhere. 
Yeah, I think this this will give us a decent chance of of setting up an encounter. How much more delta V is this? 322. Let's let's do that. And then we'll leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. Uh, leave Minmus's sphere of influence, pardon. And we shall rendezvous with the asteroid. Right, this delta V is actually coming together fairly nicely. Um, now the the big question: Should we? do a preemptive resupply mission. I mean, we can probably build one fairly quickly on Minmus, so just a, just a big ship full of jet fuel, which will then head out to, to this one, but that's a little bit pessimistic. On the other hand, we are almost halfway through... Oh no, we're not halfway through a fuel. I was looking at the monopropellant here, which is almost depleted, but then again, this is also almost depleted. So we're about halfway through our fuel, and we haven't quite rendezvoused with it yet. Also, I don't know the speed of the asteroid, so it may be a very hard rendezvous. Or it may actually... It, it, it's going to be a big difference either way, because look at these crazy vectors. But I have a, I have sort of have a good feeling about this. We can warp to Minmus Escape, and we will observe the asteroid as it progresses. It doesn't progress a lot. It's not going that fast. Altitude, 80,000 meters. And of course the important bit is to nudge it away from Kerbin. Hey, and then we can immediately see if it's any good as a heat shield, because we can skim it through the atmosphere at like, say, 40 kilometers. An altitude that will not cause it to tumble. It is an asteroid, maybe a little bit higher, maybe like 50 kilometers. A, a, a low intensity test run of its function as a heat shield. Yes, I think that's a good idea. Right, now though, we need to start thinking about intercepts. We are now in Kerbin's sphere of influence. Let's see, why is it not giving me an encounter? It's giving me an encounter like way in the future, like in Oh, 13 days. It's not that far into the future. So do I need to go faster? That's the question. Also, it's giving me an encounter on the solar orbit side, not on the, the Kerbal orbit side. That's not good. I need to have that encounter here. Let's see. I'm getting here in five days. Can I tell when the asteroid is getting here? I don't think I can. Alright. I don't think I have the grunt in this ship to just massively boost towards it. I'm just going to try and overlay these lines as best as I can in three dimensions. A little bit more this way. And they're sort of intersecting in this one. And then we're meeting up here. I will get here in two days. Let's see. We're still not fat we're we're still not that fast that at the altitude we're gonna be at. We're going to be very fast. Um that was a good sentence. So we can we can correct then, we can easily turn around and, and do things. And I'm full on blaming the maneuver notes. It, what? How is it now all of a sudden here? Oh, this is this is where it's supposed to be. I uh, got fooled by the system there. Um, I'm going to carefully time warp a little bit. Six days. I think that will be past there in six days. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to need to, cha to change course. Um, we're going to have to go slower, actually. Whoa, yes. Okay, here we will encounter it on the way up. That's not good. Do we need to go faster instead? So our asteroid is now there. We need to we need to go in a different direction. We in the past we needed to go faster. Alright. Our periaps is now it will happen in two days over there. This will probably take a lot of delta V, yes. Oh, what happened now? 
Oh, we changed things. That's not something I meant to do. Mm. Change it back. Is it going to be really hard to to grab it? It 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 could get really hard to grab it. I mean, the thing being on an intercept trajectory, like where uh, like a crashing trajectory, does not make things easier. Um. Something like this. Two days? Is that th still two days out? I think so. It's still farther out than Minmus. It is heading straight towards it, though. Why won't it give me an intercept? A little bit faster, then? No, maybe not faster. Maybe aim for there. I'm finding it very hard to just aim. But this crossways uh, rendezvous is not the way this asteroid was meant to do things. Um, let's go. Let's take it a little bit on the safe side. Go here. Yeah. Quick jump cut through this burn. And there we are, almost completed. Let's call it a completion. Right. We will again make it here in about two days. Hopefully the asteroid will deign to do something similar. There it is, coming, 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 yes! Yes, look at that, we are, well, we're way ahead of it. But that's actually okay. Our speed relative to the target is a, a kilometer per second though, that, that's possibly not okay. Um, we are going to have to slow down pretty much completely along our orbit. But that's okay, we can just do that. I think. And then head towards it. Yes, this will be a lot a lot of delta V. Let's then actually wait to do that until we're actually at maximum intercept. Yeah, like this. We are now going to kill our relative well we're not going to kill our relative velocity. We're going to, let's see, our orbit retrograde vector will be about here. And we shall... We are currently heading up, this is good. We want to head up more. We're going to burn at this vector and do so to, let's see, how far are we along our fuel reserves? We're about halfway through now. And yeah, we have 700 meters per second and then another 300 or so to match with the asteroid. We have that. So we basically gotta stay right here. The only vector we want to keep is our upwards vector and then make for the asteroid. It's 16,000 kilometers away. This seems like a far, like this seems like a lot, but we can probably make the rendezvous from here. And this is a very clunky rendezvous, but I blame it on the encounter indicators, just not understanding this collision impact. Oh well, nothing to do about it. I will fine tune the rest of the the encounter here and we'll update you with the um, important events as they happen. Like a CNN broadcast. Right, so now we're basically heading at the target at 800 meters per second, which is a scary amount to be honest. But let's do some time warping. Our separation is 16 and a half thousand kilometers and falling, which is good. It's falling at a kilometer per second. So a few more hours and we ought to get there. Interestingly, we are almost heading straight up and that's almost heading straight down. And we can see our relative velocity is staying more or less constant because the velocity I'm losing due to gravity, the asteroid is gaining. So there's that, that's neat. Um, all right, we're now mostly diverging again. And I think at this point it makes sense to completely zero relative velocities, which is a, a hefty burn, and then approach. 
which is exactly what we're going to do. And as you can see on the dials and indicators, that will take 850 meters per second, which means that this rendezvous is oh, the most expensive rendezvous in the history of this space program, mostly because we had to come from the other side of the solar system. Here, Minmus was definitely a bad place to launch from. We had to come from the other, pla other, other side of the solar system, book it over here quickly, and then actually find the asteroid with a rough shot way because no maneuver node system was working and then book it to the asteroid and then actually do the rendezvous so I, I sincerely do hope that the fuel will suffice otherwise it will be a little bit of a pain on the other hand we will be in a stable orbit of Kerbin so we might be able to do a colony hub logistics transfer that may be possible, although that will take a full day. So, that's scary. That is scary. Um, but first, let's actually just get there. Our fuel isn't gone yet. These, these indicators are scarily low, but it isn't gone yet. We still have quite a lot of it remaining. That's an exaggeration, we have a very small amount of it remaining. And just to remind you, if you're thinking like, what the hell are you going to do with this, that asteroid with no fuel remaining? Well, we are going to mine fuel from it. If this happens to be an asteroid with no ore in it, Kerbin is screwed, because then everything is going to crash on it. But otherwise, yes, everything should be fine. Yeah, no, no surprises here, we're on a big-ass collision course, because, well... We're matching course with the asteroid. And it's actually saying now we will intersect at planet Kerbin. Of course, this is unacceptable. Let's leave these 180 meters per second be. And let's actually now burn towards the asteroid a bit. Let's do that like so. Because we still want to go there. I mean, we are we are now 1,600 kilometers away, which is still a fair amount. But look, our our orbits are are converging more and more. I think. Are we actually now heading in the direction of this asteroid? Well, well, more or less. Our fuel is absolutely going to run out. I did not count for such an expensive rendezvous. That is, that's going to be a, a problem. I will tell you now. That is going to be a problem. We we have two like reserve tanks in the in the middle of the ship. Right. We are now actually on a on a collision approach course with the asteroid. 220 meters per second relative speed. And let's see how far is it to this point. It's two hours. I'm looking because I want to find out what a... Oh, we're not in a stable orbit anymore, so we can't do a colony logistics anyway. See, we are now almost out of our main fuel reserves, and then we have like two... Actually, just the one. No, two spare tanks here in the middle that are linked to all six engines. So that's like a third again. That's like two tanks for six engines. That's two-thirds each. So that's, that's, say, 300. 300 units of fuel per... Wait, no, that makes no sense at all. Divided by 6, it's one-third of each. So that's like 130 units of fuel for each. Uh, right. Well, our relative speed is, is fairly low at the moment. Yet, the game is still not showing an encounter. Let's see how this goes on then. We're now at a thousand kilometers distant that's that's a low amount 500 our relative speed is still 220 we may actually make it yeah here we go a hundred kilometers away we will be able to see it yes 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 where is the asteroid there it is this 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 rendezvous was good we're going to change course to to meet it head on I think. Go on then. Alright, let's not waste fuel frivolously here. 
we have a little bit of it remaining which honestly should suffice for those 200 meters per second let's see closest approach is less than 50 40 30 36 we're now moving sort of away from it again but come on, I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way. 30 kilometers is close enough for a zeroing of speed and then just approaching. At least this is what we're going to have to do. What? No, we have to center fuel. Oh, god damn it. It's not doing that. Alright, we'll continue the maneuver on just two engines because apparently it doesn't want to do the transfer through the fuel pipes I made and I can't be bothered to route four, two tanks of fuel through six receiver tanks and um, that's n just not gonna happen. Fortunately my engines are laid out symmetrically so I can do like this and then have two of them powering the ship. It's a fair bit lighter now anyway it will reduce maneuvering power, obviously, but there's nothing to do about that. It's still sufficient. So, these two engines are our last hopes. Fortunately, they don't have to do that much. We're 25 kilometers away. Now, there is an additional problem that ore mining actually takes a while. And this thing is now going to have to mine against the clock to gather enough fuel to not crash into Kerbin. That will be interesting. Then again, it will only need a very small nudge not to not to crash into Kerbin, so it will probably be fine. Right, well this rendezvous is fairly self-explanatory. We're going to zero out until zero meters per second and then just move towards it at like 50 or something. And then I'll rejoin the video. Yes, yes, yes. I have 24 minutes to go before I have to go to work. I should be able to make it. And there we are, slowing into the asteroid. We're still going at 30 meters per second. Kind of want to still adjust our vector to go straight for it. Pushing the retrograde marker onto the target retrograde marker here and stop it. It's kind of amazing how completely out of fuel we are. I mean, come on. We have... 444 fuel units left. Actually, that's a lot more than the 0 0.59 our Gilly lander had, but still, it's a low amount. And now, a pro potential problem is dawning on me. This asteroid is A-class. That's very small. Maybe it won't have resources. Maybe it won't have enough resources. Maybe it won't be big enough to be a heat shield. All these things we'll figure out pretty soon because we're only 300 meters away and it's appearing very very small honestly it's a disappointment for this big minor thing we may have had to grab a, a very much bigger asteroid although if that's the case then we can just grab this small one refuel from it no need to needlessly tax our minmus fuel people um, and then move on to a bigger one now speaking of moving on we're going to turn around do the rest of the deceleration on SAS. Our clampatron has been, our, our grabatron has been clamped, armed. I mean, uh, target center of mass here. Yes, that is going to be the straight center. RCS system engaged. Right vector completely aligned with the center of mass. Breaking. Oh god, the breaking is not happening soon enough. We're going to impact, we're at one and a half meters per second, or oh, maybe not. It's an RCS suicide burn, people. A half meter per second. Yeah. This asteroid is veritably tiny. This is nothing compared to the class E one that we just barely managed to know. This is not a heat shield. Ah, uh, maybe this. It's going to be a really small heat shield, though. Um, have we successfully linked? Yes. Let's see, if I'm a sun, I'm trying to burn everything. Jing, 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 raise, raise, raise. Yeah, this may be an effective, effective heat shield. It's just solar panels that are protruding. We can retract them. 
Holy shit, that, that, that's like the, the perfect fit of a heat shield. I wonder if that works. This is such so small an asteroid. Oh well. Now we'll have to deploy the drills. Because it's still on a collision course for Kerbin. Now of course something I did not take into account is that these drills will take a lot of power, which I don't have. Let's see, start asteroid harvester. Is recognizing what it is. That's good. I mean, of course, we didn't bring a scanner. Oh, we did bring a scanner. It has 26% ore. That's good. It's at least it's some ore. Right, we are now harvesting ore. If the game is functioning correctly, this will not increase the mass of the total vessel. But you never know. I mean, it's going from the asteroid into a tank. Something could happen. But the more important bit is we're now going to start the resource utilization for liquid fuel and monopropellant we don't need quite yet so this is happening now then that this system is engaged we need to alter our course to make us not encounter Kerbin let's see is this the way to go yeah Right, we need like a feeble 36 meters per second. We're going to use our RCS to turn around. I think this mission is going to be a resounding success. We have ore. Our liquid fuel capacity is increasing. It's increasing much faster than our... Our, our ore is increasing much faster. I mean, the four miners, they really have nothing on them. The other way around, please the resource harvester has nothing on the four miners and this asteroid is really small maybe it won't get us all the way to the sun and I didn't bring the scanner oh wait yeah you see this is eight tons worth of resources that's not enough that's like almost enough to mostly fill this craft it's not enough to haul everything towards the sun. So we're going to have to use a... You see, see how much Delta V we, we are applying with just... with an asteroid attached. Oh man, I've completely underestimated the size of a class A... I've overestimated the size of a class A asteroid. This is not... this doesn't have enough fuel to get us to the sun. No, no, no. But... what is good is that the system works. The system works, everyone. We have ore harvesting. We have fuel refining. Fuel is actually being created faster than we can burn it. Although we're burning at a very low efficiency, apparently. Two and a half kilonewtons. We are, we are burning it at the rate we're getting it. That's a nice system. Never mind that we have, like, two engines with a lot more. But that's fine. We are we are completely happy with this system. This is like ion engines. This is like a very primitive torch drive. I mean, we have an asteroid. It's mining it. It's refining it, and it's shooting it out the back. Unfortunately, this asteroid is already 25% depleted. That's a little bit scary. And are these percentages now moving? No, I don't know how this works. I mean, is this now? going to like mine at 26% efficiency until this is depleted or will this stop having any effect like now right anyway we are not currently crashing into the earth I think yeah we're at a periapsis of 823 kilometers and with this thing being as small as it is I don't feel comfortable trying it out as a heat shield unless of course we have a impossible move ahead of us we are going to try by the way to well we're just going to go to our periapsis that will take how long two days that means the vol intercept lander will happen first what we're gonna do before the end of this video is establish this thing in a orbit of Kerbin whilst we prospect for a new heat shield asteroid a larger one that will then be 
See, it has stopped mining because there is nothing left. The fuel here is not full. This was a tiny puny asteroid. And this actually, the existence of these puny asteroids may turn into a problem with the plan to build like a big city on an asteroid and um, wait this changes everything this asteroid is now completely useless we can just I mean it's it's going to miss Kerbin that's safe we can just leave that bye bye release uh, first the miners maybe we can leave this stupid asteroid B Class A ones, we, we're not going to do anything with that. I mean, this is not... It's, it's barely large enough, enough as a heat shield. Um, it certainly doesn't have the resources to get us close to the sun. And it's just been a big disappointment. So, let's get out of here. And all we have to do now is... I mean, we've saved Kerbin, ta -da 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 -da, be happy about that. Uh, what we have to do now is just keep this thing in a Kerbin orbit and wait for a properly sized asteroid to, to happen among our path. Let's see, we are going to put an alarm for the periapsis. That will be two days and some hours. And now we're going to change course on this ion lander to fall, which I won't waste too many video time. Ooh, what? Everything is really hot, apparently. Um, right, I'll make a maneuver note and show you. Right, here goes this maneuver node. This is headed to Vol, remember? And with an application of 300 meters per second of delta FE, we will get into this orbit, where we can use late gravity even to slow down around Joule and probably get something nice around Vol. So we're going to try and do this maneuver node with some precision. So it will happen in a day and an hour. And this is a nicely small and nimble craft. It is, it is curiously hot though been out in space here for a long time and I wonder what's keeping it this warm. Is it a glitch in the machine or is it an actual something? Alright, let's get that day and an hour over with. I wonder if you put a colony logistics hub in the solar orbit that you can then just basically teleport resources all over the solar system in a day and an hour. I would think that there is some safeguard against this in the mod, but we're not going to find out because I, I even if it would work, that's just too much cheating for my taste. Damn it, that asteroid was a disappointment. Right, here we go. 300 meters per second, engine lit, and magically that only takes a second. And a second later we're almost there. Let's see, 25 meters per second to go. Let's have a stare at the, the actual course as it is happening is on these distances like single meters per second make all the difference and well surprise surprise the intended path isn't quite gonna happen although maybe that means that these past these last few meters per second may actually have to be aimed squarely at the maneuver node yeah here we're going we're going we're getting there Oh hell yes, this has got to be the best interplanetary rendezvous I've ever set. Boom, got it. It's that we're not going to lathe, otherwise it would be perfect, but from here we'll be perfectly in plane and ex exquisitely situated to get to Vol. And we'll probably sneak some pictures at lathe, yeah. Right, now back to, I mean we've done this, back to the Sun Diver Mark III, which is now rapidly turning into a Kerbin Diver. It has not, let's not forget, well, whilst we're hating on this ship so much, let's not forget that it has actually saved Kerbin from a, well, a one ton, a ten ton impact. It has saved Kerbin not quite from extinction, but from like the impact of a fairly large bus. And come on, that can ruin anyone's day. If you're suddenly find yourself with a high velocity school bus falling from the sky in your neighborhood, you're probably going to complain. And these people are, you might write a sternly worded letter. And these people are now not going to have to. So the Sun Diver was sort of a success. Let's not mind the fact that we're not diving into a sun, we don't have an asteroid heat shield, and we certainly don't have full fuel tanks. So all in all, mixed, mixed reports. Now we're going to slow down a bit so that we're actually going to stay in system for a second shot. See, here we go, a nice polar high elliptical orbit. I'm oh, not that polar. 
Um, I'm gonna hope the asteroid, the next asteroid is gonna come in from a vector somewhat like this. We'll see about that. Anyway, I think that's gonna conclude it for today's episode. I did manage to squeeze one in in the morning before work. Boom, go me. And that means you at least have half a weekend of videos this weekend. Next episode, hopefully tomorrow, maybe a lot later, will be landing a base on Elu, doing some course corrections, and probably figuring out something new to do. Oh, of course, finding an asteroid. Let's see if we can quickly find an asteroid now, because that I did say I was going to do, and I kind of want to put an alarm in for a new heat shield asteroid. I mean, we have test-driven the resource extractor. We've also determined that it's completely possible to, to w use up all resource tons, even though there's only 26% ore. That's fine. Um, so we're going to have to find the biggest, baddest asteroid there is. I mean, it will take a long time to, to then actually get get that near the sun, because the acceleration will be horrifically low. Let's see, class B, C, 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 medium. We could try a medium, but we could also try this one, class E, huge. I mean, that's even larger than the Hunter 1. I mean, this is going to happen in 190 days. I mean, class E, 18 meters in radius. That's probably some good heat shield material. And it will also give us a feel for how useful asteroids are actually going to be as an interplanetary starship. Planet ship? It doesn't... No, a starship doesn't sail stars. A spaceship, an interplanetary spaceship. Yes, good old-fashioned nomenclature. Alright, let's see, can we... Yeah, we want to track the object. And can we like... Ah, yeah, we can make a sphere of influence change thing in 190 days. So before that, we kind of really want to resupply the um, Ion Exodus. No, not the Ion Exodus, the, the Sun Diver with some fresh fuel. That would be nice. Uh, we're probably going to have to la launch that from Kerbin because that would make sense. Um, yeah, but that's happening way late, like in 191 days. Great, so this was episode 8 of Kerbal Space Colonization, where we mostly work on our infrastructure to bootstrap the colonization in the future, which is going relatively well. I mean, don't forget our carborundum miners are underway. We are about to get fusion power, and we're about to land our first base module on Elu pretty good stuff I'd say. Check all that out next episode. For now I'm Lorenzo. Thanks for watching. Do all the Twitter, Steam, jolly stuff if you so please. It always makes me smile. Goodbye.